before, but uh, mm-hmm. I was not having any privilege to talk or uh, any other. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so actually it. we are searching your server. We couldn't know that you are in Pakistan. Yeah, I am in my hometown, and I am not very confident on my uh, connection. This is a <laughs> yeah. village which is around 120 yeah. kilometer away from Calcutta. But uh, but I'll manage. I'll yeah. as soon as yeah. I start, I'll turn off my video because I am. Yeah. No, it's it's quite watching. good now. Ah, actually, it's quite good bandwidth, sir. We can hear. Yeah, you. I have taken classes uh, in this way <laughs> for uh, last two three days. I hope it will be fine. Yeah. yeah. So we have uh, Dr. Sudeep with us. Uh, uh, we'll now take over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sudeep, sir, please. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, good morning. Um, let good me morning. introduce uh, Dr. Chinmay Saha. Dr. Chinmay Saha received his uh, B.Tech, M.Tech, and Ph.D. degrees in radio physics and electronics from University of Calcutta, Kolkata, India, in uh, 2002, 2005, and 2012, respectively. He is currently working as an associate professor in the Department of Avionics, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Department of Space Government of India. He has visited several international universities of repute, such as Royal Military College of Canada, Queen's University Canada during 2015 and 2018 in various capacities and having collaborative research with RMC Canada, Kingston, Ontario, and University of Alberta, Canada. He is a senior member of IEEE, senior member of International Union of Radio Science, and a life member of IETE. He is founding and current chairman of IEEE MTTS Kerala chapter. He has served as the chairman of Antenna and Propagation chapter of IEEE Kerala section during 2018 and 19. Dr. Saha has received several prestigious awards, which includes National Award, AACTE, Vishweshwaraya Best Teacher Award 2021, received from Union Education Minister, Government of India. IETE Professor SN Mitra Memorial Award 2021, Outstanding Teacher Award in 2019 from Department of Avionics, IAST. Outstanding Contribution Award from APMTT Kolkata Chapter, Best Contribution Award for Notable Services and Significant Contributions Towards the Advancements of IEEE and the Engineering Profession from IEEE Kolkata Section, and several Best Paper Awards in various international conferences. His current research interest includes wireless power transfer and energy harvesting channel modeling for WB, UWB systems, microwave circuits, engineered materials, meta materials, inspired antennas and circuits, reconfigurable and multifunctional antennas for modern wireless applications, dielectric resonator antennas, and tetrahedge antennas. He has more than 140 publications, including 32 journal papers in peer reviewed national and international journals and conference proceedings and other two books. He is an associate editor in IEEE SS and International Journal of RF and Microwave Computer Aided Engineering and guest editor editor in chief of a special issue in the same journal. And uh, now I request Saha sir, uh, please take over and uh, give your valuable presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sajid. At the outset, I would like to congratulate the entire organizing team, uh, Dr. Divya, uh, Dr. Gautam, and I believe uh, there are other faculty members and uh, management of the institute for taking this wonderful initiative. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Divya was in touch with me for a few times. I had to change my schedule because uh, due to some urgency I'm at my hometown, I hope my network will support me. And it is needless to mention that even though it's a webinar, there are uh, less uh, requirement in terms of uh, uh, compared to a physical event. At a webinar with so many panel members, so many expert speakers, organizing requires uh, some special uh, capability. And it is binary, so it is zero and one. If there is a technical glitch, you are gone. So I believe uh, and I fully understand you have done a very good work. 
and once again uh, thanks for inviting me so it is very brief i'm sure i will go to my presentation directly uh, just let me know if you can yeah sir it's very yes, okay. so at any point during the presentation if you see uh, there is uh, any quality compromise on my uh, screen then just let me know so that i'll turn off my video immediately yeah okay sir. yeah thank you so uh, today's agenda uh, is near and far field wireless power transfer trend techniques and recent development so even though uh, main topic is wpt as you know that wpt and uh, energy harvesting are like two different sides of a coin so they are very much interrelated and connected and this is one of the wings of uh, my research group and we are working on this area for last 4 to 5 years so i'll give an overview of both energy harvesting and wireless power transfer and then i'll be mainly speaking on our work before i go to the actual presentation let me take a couple of minutes to talk about my institute and the research group IIST is one of the unique universities across the globe catering to the world class education and research into the area of space science and technology initiated by dr apj abdul kalam these are the research activities uh, which are currently happening in my research group printed antenna research we have contributed quite a lot being a part of indian space mission we have very good rapport with various space research organization isro so we do lot of design in different centers feed antenna design for satellite tracking applications is one of the major contribution which is a successful collaboration of iist and national remote sensing center i have apart from that we have good rapport with sat and other centers and as i mentioned millimeter wave wpt and terahertz system is something on which we have started working so these are some of the activities that you can see i will not talk on this today i have spoken on this topic uh, on other occasions in fact i remember i was in trichy quite a few times uh, on different occasion related to dst spark workshop at nit trichy and uh, maybe a couple of more times before so these are uh, some of our contribution on the printed antenna research related to ultra wide band antennas multi functional antennas some work related to dielectric resonator antennas for bandwidth control able antennas and some uh, work related to a collaboration with bikram saravai space center i mean i don't want to take much time on this these are some of our contribution into the idea of uh, metamaterial inspired antennas and sockets probably uh, a few of you might have heard uh, me speaking on this in other podium these are some uh, contributions which are mainly available in open literature different kind of resonators mainly the spitting resonators and their applications on different kind of antennas recently one of my students who is a scientist at nrc Hyderabad has used such concept in designing frequency notched horn antenna, and it is already used for planar traveling wave antennas like Vivaldi antenna or modified Vivaldi antenna, which is balanced antipodal reflector antenna, etc. The concept has been used very nicely for reducing cross polar discrimination for such antennas, and as a uh, you introduced me regarding the multifunctional antennas our group has contributed quite a lot we have uh, published 
some of our work in IEEE you know, transactions, IEEE you know, letters, and recently we have come up with a book on such a topic. So, but then today I'll not go into the details of this, but as I said, I'll just give an overview of our research journey. We do work on uh, photoconductive antennas, which is uh, a different technique. Unlike the printed antennas, we have the generation of the electromagnetic signal is basically by exciting a semiconductor of proper band gap using a femtosecond laser beam. And this semiconductor is a special semiconductor with proper minority carrier lifetime and proper carrier mobility. And when you excite this semiconductor with a proper laser pulse, you can excite the transient photons converting the electron hole pairs, which constitutes a current, and that current causes the radiation. So this is some of the fabricated antennas, which are basically uh, in terms of dimension micron level. So these are very, very enlarged images of some of the fabricated antennas, which are kind of SAC, Space Application Center. Uh, this slide I'll skip because I'll be talking on this today. And this is some outcome of IIST's so collaborative project with, for tracking antennas. And as I mentioned, we work on multifunctional antennas. Such antennas are very good candidate for efficient utilization of electromagnetic spectrum. And as you know, this is a very useful concept and is being successfully employed by radio engineers for enhancing the channel capacity or for enhancing the spectrum utilization efficiency. This idea, in addition to MIMO or massive MIMO, I just heard the last part of Professor Paul's talk. So these ideas will be very, very useful for catering to the decentral. With this brief introduction and a virtual journey about our research group, I will start this presentation. So this is the outline. I'll be speaking on energy harvesting. I know some of the speakers has already talked on some of the components which are required for WPT, maybe rectifier design, etc., or rectina design probably. But my first part will be giving you an overview of wireless energy harvesting. Some of my PhD students are working in that area. And uh, other 50% of the talk will be mainly on wireless power transfer, which will have a contemporary literature as well as our own contribution using a new technique of wireless power transferring, which is basically a dialectic resonator based wireless power transfer. So this is a perpetual energy problem. The mother earth is the source of all energy, the solar energy, wind energy, or any other kind of energy, whatever is available, we can think of as the global source. And as some of the conventional sources of energies are becoming scarce because of the lack of some of the materials which are used for producing energy, the stress or the focus on non-conventional energy sources is becoming more and more important. This is a global problem and various countries, including government of India, is having special focus and emphasis on producing energy in various other possible forms, which are typically called as non-conventional energy source. It may be solar, it may be microwave or wireless energy, it may be wind or any other kind of energy. As you have seen in the different areas of India, especially in the coastal areas, we have probably seen the uh, solar as well as the wind-based energy. Some of the biggest manufacturers or the players are already there in the market. 
But what is energy harvesting? Energy harvesting, you can convert any energy ultimately into the electrical energy, but without a proper efficiency, without a proper technology, it is uh, not useful. So we have to see that whether this is uh, this involves high maintenance or it is more or less maintenance free, whether the technique is environment friendly or not, and what are the level of energy that you are getting. And for that level of energy, what are the applications? So this is a very common and generic idea. You need not be a very you know, top-notch technologist to understand this. So this is the typical concept of wireless energy harvesting or in general any energy harvesting. It is not only wireless, it's just one part of the energy we are talking about. You know, in the vibration, using the concept of use electric and other kinds of ideas, even the mixed mode where you can think of combining different sources of energy to convert finally into the electrical energy are also being considered. So I had to look for such energy. So power stations, computers and microwaves, even theoretically, we are also radiating the energy. It will not be uh, at a very high level, but it may be at a different frequency band, etc. So different types of waste energy we can capture and we can use them for different applications. I will show some information which will give you an idea regarding the energy level which is available. So we can light energy from sunlight, we have kinetic energy, which is vibration, mechanical stress or strain. The aerospace people are mainly working in converting such energies. Thermal energy, which is basically the, we are having a lot of wastage from heaters, friction, engines, etc. And the beauty of RF energy is it might not be at a very high level, but it is omnipresent. It is not function of temperature directly. It is not function of uh, the climate, maybe. It's not function of which part of the globe you are. It is more or less omnipresent and it is present almost everywhere. So if we think of a functional law for energy harvesting, whatever it is a generic idea, whatever form of energy we want, the, there should be a basic harvester, which is the basic physical principle, you have to convert one form of energy into another form of energy, that is the convert harvester. Then you have a conversion circuit, if we want to finally convert and deliver it to the electronic load. So you have to have proper mechanism to convert it. Sometimes for our application and our domain, we need to convert, down convert them using different kinds of technologies. And then obviously there are cases where you are not using that energy instantaneously, rather you might generate more than what you need immediately. So there might be, must be a storage mechanism and a power management circuit. So this is a generic functional diagram for energy harvesting system. So as I mentioned, so these are the key blocks, harvester or transducer, conversion circuits, which is basically rectifiers or multipliers for our case, energy storage, which is basically a battery or it may be a supercapacitor, and finally, the power management. So, but we, the RF engineers, are mainly concerned on the opportunities that we can get from RF energy harvesting. So what is RF energy harvesting? It's not different from other concepts. Only thing here, the boundary conditions are different. How much I, we can get is a little bit limited but it is not limited by space and time. That is the biggest advantage. That's why I said it is everywhere and you can say it is omnipresent, right? Omni in terms of space, omni in terms of time. RF wave is available both indoors and outdoors in rural and urban areas throughout the day. And with increased 
demand uh, on communication and etc we have more and more number of opportunities to scavenge this unutilized rf energy and we know that many of applications like wireless sensor network internet of things etc require some continuous sources of energy and it is basically a huge hazard to replace the battery and the power sources periodically for maintaining such a big sensor network or for some iot applications so it is better if we can harvest the ambient energy and channelize it to activate those sensor nodes even agricultural application etc for different sensors humidity sensors even sensors for soil moisture etc some of my students are at the initial stage of working in that area are very very useful but there is a limitation the limitation is it gives you a tiny amount of power that can be harvested but that tiny amount of power is good enough for many of the interesting applications so this is a broad understanding of different kind of harvesters it may be broadly categorized into following thermoelectric which is basically thermal energy converted to electrical energy we have piezo electric which is basically kinetic energy converted to electrical energy photovoltaic which is light energy converted to electrical energy and the last one rf which is rf energy to electrical energy so we'll be concentrating mostly on this particular area in today's talk and it will be mainly towards the wpt also towards the last part so as i mentioned earlier this is a very interesting information you can compare different harvesting topologies or techniques like solar vibration thermal and rf in terms of power density harvesting technology i mean pros and cons so as i mentioned if you compare for example solar and rf here the power level is quite low and it also will depend on which band you are working so gsm for example at a typical distance of 20 meter from a tower mobile tower etc or a typical distance in a uh, wifi network the available power density is not very high when you compare with the other techniques right so it is 0.1 milliwatt per centimeter square or 1 milliwatt per centimeter square micro so here the harvesting technology is basically you have you are supposed to have an antenna to collect energy from all possible directions so you need to have probably antenna arrays which will harvest the energy from the ambient energy from different directions the advantage is it is all, always available and the disadvantage already spoken low density efficiency is inversely proportional to the distance and then you can compare this topology with other techniques as already mentioned so rf energy harvesting uh, this is a probably you know very well talked functional block diagram and it is self explanatory that the key units are antenna the matching circuit and this antenna matching circuit and rectifier together sometimes we call this as a rectifier what is the purpose of the matching circuit because these rectifiers which are basically converting your rf into dc the input impedance of this rectifier are hardly matched with the input impedance of your receiving antenna so you need a proper matching network and this matching network is designing this matching network is very challenging because the input impedance of this rectifier is not fixed it is even function of the input power level so that creates lot of challenges so i need to have a matching network which will not only work for a broad frequency range 
depending on the antenna impedance bandwidth <coughs> but also which will lower over a fluctuating input power level because as we know depending on the power level the input impedance of this rectifier circuit is changing that is the biggest challenge for the rf engineers to concentrate on the spectrum side that is to make the matching network as broadband as possible you no know, because you have already quite established technologies in designing ultra wide band or you know very broad band antennas and at all bands lower side i was just hearing professor call you can you know 5g related we are talking about the sub 6 gigahertz 28 gigahertz and 38 gigahertz yes we have antennas some of those are ultra wide bands and you can uh, you have well established techniques and knowledge to design these antennas but when it comes to the harvesting antennas where you need that rf power to be converted into dc you have to think of bandwidth of the antenna as well as the ambient power level which causes the fluctuation in the input impedance of this rectifier some of my students are doing very good work i talk on only on the rectifier part maybe on some separate occasion that from but then you have to have some power management unit also depending on uh, your uh, capability and your objectives so probably for working on this particular area the rf engineers need to talk to some uh, power uh, engineers like high uh, low frequency but high power engineers because this is little bit beyond the normal curriculum of the rf engineers regarding the battery element or storage or dc dc converter etc now when we talk about the rf energy harvesting where we are from the uh, source that is also important the antenna engineers always use this term the near field and far field sometimes we use uh, the other terminologies which are trenels and fan offer so we need to know how far we are and depending on that uh, you know the phase uh, transmission formula you must be knowing so the phase space loss is there so the distance is a very very important factor for us anyway so when you come to these uh the wireless energy harvesting so you need to have a good idea that how do you classify your technology or rather what are the figure of merits so following on the figure of merits first the operation range at what distance your harvesting circuit is going to work and uh you know uh, depending on that you have to have uh, you know related to frequency right but what frequency are going to work on that is also important and then the conversion efficiency rf to dc power conversion efficiency so you have rf input and finally you want dc and it is basically the product of rf to ac efficiency and then eta ac to dc efficiency so this is the ac to dc power conversion efficiency and this is the rf to ac efficiency more specifically it is direct clearly mentioned like this p collector by p rf incident and this eta ac to dc is how much power you are finally delivering to the dc load over how much uh, power uh, you have collected from the rf okay and then the resonant q factor that is also another very important factor because you want the energy stored and finally there's the energy to be delivered to the load sensitivity this is very important like we need to have a mechanism to sense the i mean to detect the lowest possible power so minimum power required for triggering a wpt wph system why it is so because finally we have antenna which can detect very low level rf power also but if that power is not enough to you know turn on some diodes or some uh, semiconductor devices which are required for uh, designing these rectifiers then i cannot sense that so 
the diodes with low cut-in voltage or very low threshold voltage are the immediate requirement for such application. And then output power is uh, e equally important because it is finally the DC power which is required and that is characterized by the load voltage VDD uh, and the current IDD. So uh, this part of uh, rectenna design, which involves the antenna as well as rectifier design uh, are two different parts, but finally we need to uh, have it on a common uh, PCD. So there are uh, quite a few interesting design and this literature is growing every day. So you can uh, go through some of the uh, good articles in ITP transactions, etc. This is uh, some interesting literature from following references. So you can see different kinds of antennas, sometimes antenna array also, and uh, some of them are even on chip antennas also. And then you have the matching circuit and rectifier circuit embedded over there. And when you talk about a matching circuit, as I mentioned already, uh, regarding the main challenge of the matching, it is uh, broadband matching in terms of frequency, which is a, a typical RF problem, which is a lot of uh, techniques are there to achieve uh, broadband matching, as you must be knowing. And But the more challenge uh, arises because of the fact, as I already mentioned, is the fluctuation of the input impedance due to the fluctuating power level. So these are the conventional matching circuit, which you can use it. So they are called the impedance matching network. So you have L network, you have T network, Pi network, or reverse tail network, etc. Depending on which type of rectifier circuit you are going to use, you have to think of a proper matching circuit. And these rectifiers, you can have different topologies of rectifiers, uh, which is same you probably, you know, students start learning these rectifiers even then they're in 10 plus two, et cetera. But here the main challenge will be the cho choice of the diodes with very low cutting voltage, which will be operational at very, very high frequency. So as you know, normally the PN junction diodes will not work. So you have to use the proper These are like your halfway rectifier, you have your bridge rectifier, etc. Right? So these are the known topologies, I'm uh, pretty sure. Okay. Uh, is, is my network fine? Uh, can anyone quickly say? Yes, yeah, sir, I, it's yeah. fine, but yeah. there was this uh, small bit. There was a glitch. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Just I'm now, right? 10 seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's fine. Someone was trying to call me, so probably because okay. of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, these are the rectifier topologies uh, in a block diagram level, and then you can go for the circuit level diagram level also. If there are people who want to work in this area, maybe who are beginners, so this should be a good starting point of literature survey. Uh, you know, you can design different kind of uh, rectifier topologies and come to a uh, compar uh, comparative, uh, you know, results then you will get an idea regarding uh, what power level uh, and for low power level, some uh, you know sh shunt diode or whether you want to go for series diode configuration, etc. Or you, for some application, uh, you want to go for full bridge configuration. So these are very important and insightful information you'll get if someone, uh, if those who are in the beginner side want to pursue in this area. Uh, so you can just think in this direction. And this initial research is not that tough. Uh, you have to design the circuitry in ADS or maybe ADS is better because this initially it will involve more of circuits. And for example, I have shown the series diode configuration here. This is the shunt diode configuration. And sometimes you see that, uh, you know, one configuration is good for some application and other configuration is good for another application. So here we need diodes with higher breakdown uh, voltage. For example, for shunt diode. Here, for series configuration, you need diodes with lower threshold voltage. Requirement. So 
sometimes we have even seen uh, that you need to have both series and shunt configuration and type like a concept of a uh, you know intelligent electronic system you have to actuate this part from some power level and you have to actuate this part from uh, some other power level such uh, conversion uh, such uh, topologies hybrid topologies are also being used apart from that there are uh, conversion circuits and multiplex so you know there are uh, cockroft walton voltage multiplex circuit this topology is very important the dickson multiplex uh, which is like this and uh, th there are uh, quite a few other topologies also and if you compare the different topologies uh, topologies with respect to the maximum power conversion efficiency and the technology which are being used for real realizing these active topologies uh, number of stages used and the frequency of operation you will not see uh, anything which is really very great so everyone will have some pros and cons so here is the main challenge uh, for the harvesting or power transfer the main challenge is to make a proper bridging between the typical electromagnetic engineers approach which is designing antenna and the typical power electronics engineers approach which is designing the circuits rectifiers etc so there is a huge gap there that uh, bridging of the gap is the main research contribution uh, the rf and the power community is looking forward to so because we are working in this area so we are exposed to the challenges uh, and then uh, you know as i already mentioned that this might be the good starting point so for some of the people who wants to pursue in this direction so this uh, with this i conclude the first part of on the harvesting now i will go to the wpt where will i'll discuss on some of our work also so the main con conclusion is that there are different kind of energy harvesting units i just gave a slight overview on the main with rf energy harvesting there are uh, good points there are some challenges associated with uh, design of the the matching circuit and design of different kind of rectifier circuits etc so i hope this exposure will help some of the young stars and then only i'll be happy so with this uh, let me go into the second part of the talk which is basically the wpt uh, you know it's like a you know a old wine in a new bottle because uh, earliest part transfer even though it has uh, we are experiencing a huge surge over last few years not even a decade maybe for last 4 to 5 years there is a renewed interest on wpt and related uh, technologies uh, you know technologies like uh, one of the applications is definitely biomedical uh, powering some of the uavs uh, and uh, even for some of the nano satellite applications etc but i said that it is a old wine in new bottle because the uh, attempts are there for long so here is here is uh, some uh, you know contributions key contributions which are uh, summarized over a uh, few uh, you know uh, as you can see the timeline over the important landmarks are basically mentioned over here so you probably most of you might be knowing the uh, famous attempt by nikola tesla and uh, you know then many other people right for wireless uh, power transfer applications etc but the key contribution started coming in 2007 uh, at mit lab and then uh, recently few universities uh, you know have Uh, shown some wpt for implanted electronics not uh, on human but on some other uh, animals or mammals i would say and then uh, the requirement is much more so i try to give an overall exposure initially and then i'll talk on some of our work just one minute
So these are some important milestones uh, in uh, WPT. As I was mentioning, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, because the basic idea of uh, sending power wirelessly, whether it is an air field or far field technology, you need to have uh, you know uh, the voltages or current to be induced, and it has to come through the induction, whether it's a near field or it's a far field. And this was the Tesla's dream uh, to send energy wirelessly. As you know, uh, there was uh, there are some debates on that also. Attempt was there in the active charging for electric bikes. You probably know. And then this was uh, done by a group at MIT. One of the persons is Alan Sample, uh, who is considered as one of the pioneers for WPTs. And then wireless chargers uh, for commercial markets are uh, quite available now. But a requirement, as I said, is much more. As we can see, uh, the market is growing. So this was uh, a kind of a statistical survey at that time when it was published. So uh, the market is growing mainly because of huge growth in the consumer electronics as well as electric vehicles and industrial applications. And it was predicted that by 2020, uh, as you know, it's no longer a prediction, of course, that, uh, you know, the EVs, the electric vehicles are already uh, in the market and you uh, must be knowing that there is a special initiative by IEEE MTTS, Micro Theory and Technique Society, uh, you know, to come up ex with exclusive journals on WPT and also with, ex with an exclusive conference on oilless power transfer. And incidentally, we presented the group work in one of the WPT conference in Montreal before COVID. And uh, this conference is typically held in uh, European countries in every year. Anyway, so this is uh, something to just mention that how focused our community is on wireless power transfer and related technologies. So I just take uh, three to four minutes in introducing uh, WPT. Uh, so there are an air field region and far field region and major applications for the near field wireless power transfer uh, is basically NHC, near field communication, radio frequency identification, RFID, and of course the WPT. And there are many, uh, you know, applications of each of these technology. So I'm not going uh, to mention uh, then separately, but as you know, the RFID is used for different kind of access control, security applications, healthcare application, etc. Then we have uh, NFC, near field communication. Uh, you know, uh, in in th there are some uh, techniques where you can quickly transfer information. Uh, you know, very through smart device, etc. etc. Uh, for, of course, uh, as the name says, is NFC for near field communication. Perhaps you have seen information and sometimes power also. And uh, combined transfer of power and information, which is called WPIT, WPIT, or this power and information transfer, is also something which is emerging. Perhaps you have seen already the contactless uh, credit card. Uh, you don't swipe or you don't give uh, any password, etc. It's contactless. Uh, maybe security-wise, it's an issue, but uh, it is very handy, especially with the current COVID situation. And then we have WPT, uh, which has a lot of applications, uh, biomedical applications, EVs, etc. This slide is something I want to talk on. So WPT is for medical applications. Uh, so we have uh, different kind of electronics nowadays being embedded inside our body. And as you know, some of those electronics uh, needs to be powered, uh, you know, may not be very frequently, but sometimes it needs to be powered up. So 
we might have uh, some you know biomedical gadgets in terms of pacemakers or some carrying aids etc i mean this research is not full proof or not at all saturated far from being saturated rather new uh, bloods and new hands are needed so we are uh, also in that journey so basically here the challenge is enormous uh, we am engineers know uh, that, that that medium is is not at all a good medium for transferring power because when you are talking about sending power uh, to an electronic gadget which is inside the body the medium is super lossy and it's a complicated uh, you you can have all the difficulty uh, which are uh, there for you know em signals to propagate you have complicated medium you have uh, high loss you have uh, saline water you have a lot of liquid you have different layers skin fat muscle bones etc so then conversion conversion efficiency even if you try to send the power in some of those gadgets uh, what is the purpose the purpose is basically to avoid a second surgery for replacing a battery etc but then the power conversion efficiency will be very very low we are not bothered about the efficiency even if it is very low it is not affecting the other organs etc and if we can uh, you know get rid of a second surgery that would be good so there are uh, conscious effort going in this direction and the other application is basically the ban body area network we have in body on body or implanted antennas and sometimes these are being used for uh, you know uh, health monitoring or body area network applications so that patient is finally connected with the big data so these are the uh, couple of medical applications and this is identical which is for carrying aids application so with this a rough uh, brief exposure on the different kind of technologies and applications uh, if we really want to do something for energy harvesting or sending power or lessly we basically need to know the power levels which are actually available so power levels uh, or rather which are required for uh, some of the electronics or uh, automobiles to work on so uh, you know because we know the ambient power is uh, not very high so sometimes ambient energy harvest might work for some applications like wireless sensor network etc but for some electronics which requires more power we have to send the power dedicatedly from a transmitter so that's why having an idea regarding what is the power level related to different applications is very important so some of them are in the micro uh, microwatt region some of them are in milliwatt region but these are on the high voltage range and this is quite high because these are uh, you know the, we are talking about the electric vehicles so there are uh, different techniques and uh, you know for for this power transfer it will uh, depending on the technique you use you have a range you have a directivity and you have to have an idea at what frequency uh, you know you can apply that particular technique so this is uh, you know gross information on that and when you have all the available techniques like you know the electromagnetic induction you micro uh, transfer you have magnetic resonance uh, concepts etc then you have to basically know that for high range i mean for high range wireless transmission range or depending on the transmitting power level you have to deploy the corresponding technology for example if you want to go for a uh, low power and low range application then probably your electromagnetic induction which is basically a near field technique might work but if you want to go for a high range application then you might have to go for uh, definitely far field or less power transfer then their transfer efficiency etc might be uh, pretty low so uh, you know there are groups which have uh, worked on this particular technique the the main limitation has been uh, using a uh, big coils which are not very handy for most of the applications i mentioned so we need to have better and more sophisticated way to make that 
and uh, you have to ha also have a mechanism basically uh, to have proper antennas or antenna arrays if you really want to do the uh, you know far field uh, wireless power transfer etc okay so this is uh, related to inductive uh, coupling which is basically using the one minute so uh, this is the this is a famous experiment uh, which was done at uh, you know uh, mit mit lab uh, as you uh, many of you might know that these are the two coils one is the transmitter coil another is the receiving coil it's not uh, you know very recent in 2007 but this was the first i opener uh, research lab at nit Uh, and then uh, this distance it, it is just inside a small lab so the distance was not very uh, large it was just a few meters but you look at the size of the coils it's it's, it's mm, as big as the table uh, definitely in the in terms of a meter or so the diameter and the con also considered the number of turns etc but this was the first uh, experiment uh, demonstration of wirelessly sending the power uh, which is using the inductive coils we have uh, done a work which is using the capacitive coupling that is the electrical coupling unlike the magnetic coupling concept which is uh, done by the other groups and then there are uh, new concepts like electrodirective wireless power transfer some groups in india are also trying to work in this area uh in fact one of my uh, students is also working in this so this is uh, some advantages are there it is a simpler circuitry uh, receiver starts the initiation so the idea of retro directivity is something like this you will be sending the power uh, in the direction from where the power comes from so there are quite a few popular techniques as you can follow the animation so the popular techniques are the corner reflectors van attire phase conjugation retro directivity etc and when you talk about uh, this uh, little bit in detail one has to go into the details of this each of these techniques so i am just talking about some uh, you know basic idea or physical concepts so this van attire is basically symmetrical transmission line Length are used to connect antenna pairs, and you have to basically adjust the phases uh, of the outgoing IF with respect to the incoming RF, so that you can basically send the power in the direction it is coming from. And the other point is basically the phase conjugation. So uh, this is uh, some of the work that other groups have worked, and some of the. uh techniques which are being uh, considered as as uh, you know future for wireless power transfer applications over next 10 to 15 slides i'll talk on our power which is basically the dielectric resonator based wireless power transfer using the split cavity resonator so this work uh we started in 2007 when i was uh in professor uh, antas lab at royal military college of canada we had a um, strong collaboration one of the contributors was uh, is from industry you are still working on that so the idea of this wireless uh, power transfer using the dielectric resonators and split cavity resonator is something which is very very close to the coupled mode theory in classical physics what is that coupled mode theory you uh, have you have heard of the simple pendulum but if you think of a, a coupled pendulum where you have suppose there are uh, three mediators 1 2 and 3 and they are connected by a coefficient of coupling so uh, you know probably those who have studied the classical physics that in double pendulum you might have symmetric and anti symmetric mode identical to that if you have a uh, three uh elements 1 2 3 and they are interlinked with coefficient of coupling you can basically convert this problem into an eigenvalue 
equation, uh, which is can be expressed in this fashion. And when you solve this eigenvalue equation, you basically get three uh, different frequencies. So these three frequencies are basically, uh, you know, physically they are called as non-bonding, bonding, and anti-bonding mode. Here in our experiment, these two resonators are basically the dielectric resonators one and three, and two is basically a mediator in which the coupling is happening. So that mediator is a split cavity resonator. I'll show the full geometry and then probably it will be clear. But this nomenclature, non-bonding mode, which is called as plus plus minus mode, bonding mode, which is called plus 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 mode, and anti-bonding mode, which is called plus minus minus mode, is, will be revealed when I show you the field diagram, et cetera. So because we are going to use the split cavity resonators and dielectric resonators, and these cavities are excited um, by a proper coupling mechanism. So we should have an idea how the coupling can happen in a cavity. Different kind of mechanism like feeding or guide depending on which mode you want to excite, etc. Now, this is the arrangement uh, for our uh, experimental or simulation setup. These, uh, uh, you know, these two green uh, blocks, cylindrical blocks are dielectric resonators. This dielectric resonator one and dielectric resonator two, uh, the, which are excited in T01 del mode. And this excitation is happening through this excitation loop as you can see over here. And these loops are uh, basically connected to the vector network analyzer. Uh, and this one is going to the other port of the vector network analyzer for the risk one measurement. And I'll, uh, this dimension of the dielectric resonator, HDR or DDR, even the dielectric constant, this has to be properly calculated depending on the frequency of interest, etc. And this distance of separation, HFS, is basically the uh, separation between these two flanges, this entire uh, you know, cavity, which is splitted. This, this part is, you know, they are not connected. That's why it's called a split cavity. This HFS and uh, this HSC, that together constitutes the, you know, the transfer distance in this particular experiment. Transfer distance means the distance uh, that, uh, you know, at which I am receiving the power from the transmitter. Why such loop arrangement is there for exciting the DR? This needs to be understood clearly. I'll try to explain these things over the next few slides. So this is the eigenmode equation. Uh, K is the coupling coefficient. And this is the eigenvectors. So here, how do you characterize the efficiency of this system? So we are interested with transfer efficiency because we want to transfer this power from here and we want to receive this power. And the distance uh, is uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, quite a few centimeters. Uh, maybe uh, the target was uh, like a quarter a meter or so. And there are applications. There are applications uh, related to, uh, you know, sending power uh, without making a hole through through some wall, or this uh, can be scaled down for some uh, other applications like biomedical applications, etc. Some more work is going on, uh, which I'll probably speak on some other occasion. But then we are also interested with robustness and scalability performance considering the intrinsic losses, because when you do such experiment, the uh, wall finishing of the split cavity or the finishing of the dielectric resonators, etc., uh, will have some role. So the scalability is also important. And uh, detuning effect, I'll top on. So I talked about three modes, uh, you know, the bonding, anti-bonding, and non-bonding modes. In fact, this anti-bonding mode and bonding mode in uh, a perfect cavity where all the modes are excited are equidistant with respect to the original mode, which is the non-bonding mode. 
and this distance of separation is proportional to, I mean, the frequency of separation is proportional to root two k. But when we have a detuning in the cavity, detuning means I have uh, some perturbation in my experiment, and because of that, what will be the impact? The impact is the frequency for anti-bonding and non-bonding mode are basically moved up or moved down by amount delta, by an amount delta, depending on whether it's a positive error or negative error. So this is uh, showing roughly the, the modes, bondi, bonding, anti-bonding, and non-bonding mode. And as you can see from this black uh, plot, which is basically showing the S21, the S21 and this mode, which is around 1.9, 1.9 gigahertz over here, is uh, zero degree, almost zero degree. So at this frequency, the transfer efficiency, as we observed in simulation, was uh, more than 95%. And these are some more theoretical uh, equations, etc., which will be clear if you uh, go through the literature. So theoretically obtained transfer efficiency. Uh, from our model using the eigenmod solution, etc., is given by this equation. As you can see, for different loss tangent of dielectric resonator, the efficiency is uh, close to 90%. And even we use different kind of metals uh, because uh, you know you might not always use copper cavity. You might have some aluminium cavity or some other kind of cavity. It is almost invariant, as you can see, for all the materials, the efficiency is more or less uh, pretty good. And uh, this is some other uh, parametric study by changing the flange expansion uh, or flange extension by different amount of distance. So it is more or less a robust setup uh, to transfer power with uh, reasonably high efficiency. But how, what is the basic uh, idea? Because whenever you talk about the dielectric resonators, it's a very, you know, multi-mode type of resonator. You can excite different kinds of modes. So we need to have a clear idea what mode we are going to excite for our application. So this is, uh, you know, the DR modes. So all the things you over is observing here are various dielectric resonator modes. Uh, it is showing the top view as well as the side view because these are the DRs we have used in our experiment as well as simulation. So this is a very symmetric TE01 del mode. This is uh, zero means it is not having any azimuthal variation. This is one indicating that there is one uh, variation along the radial direction, uh, which is basically in terms of the Bessel function, you know. And there is del, the del is close to one, which is a variation along the z direction, along the height of the dielectric resonator, which is visible from this description. Then this is the TM type of mode, TM01 del mode, we have hybrid modes. And this is also T01 del mode, but this is the next one in terms of height variation. So it is T01, then one plus del mode, okay? So we observed that these mode, is uh, good if we can excite the uh, identical mode or matched mode with the cavity. So these are the different cavity modes. These are the uh, simulation in HFSS using the eigenmode solvers. So this mode, as you can see, the T011 mode of the cavity is having identical excitation with respect to the dielectric resonator. So finally, we used these two modes uh, for our experiment, that is the cavity mode as T01, uh, the DR as T01 del mode and cavity mode as T011 mode. So these uh, modes needs to, because you need this type of electric field, so you have to have a proper excitation loop to create such electric and magnetic field. So this is in a nutshell, all the design dimensions uh, tabulated over here for this particular experiment. We repeated the experiment quite a few times because this was the first of its kind uh, by any group uh, for, uh, you know, dielectric resonator based WPT. The main advantage is here the size of the resonators, etc., are much smaller when you compare 
with respect to uh, the, the the you know the big coils which are needed uh, for uh, uh, inductive coupling mechanism. So we did extend extensive circuit modeling also because we are talking about the different modes and different uh, dielectric resonators, etc. So these are uh, circuit model for inductively coupled resonators used in WPT system. And for us, we have three inductively coupled resonators. So we have uh, LCR, LCR, LCR representing each of that. And, uh, you know, uh, and then a lot of circuit modeling and circuit analysis are also involved over here. And these are representation of symmetric and anti-symmetric mode. And for our case, because I talked about bonding, anti-bonding and non-bonding mode, so these modes are, uh, you know, uh, represented by a very robust equivalent circuit. Please go, go through our, uh, you know, published article, uh, which is there in 2019 Journal of Applied Physics to get the full idea about this. And then uh, some more parametric analysis and results you can see from here. These are for a particular dimension, the results uh, of the transfer efficiency more than 90% for most of the cases. And these are here, there are some interesting uh, videos, uh, you know, for uh, different modes, that is the bonding, anti-bonding and non-bonding mode. Maybe I'll try to show at least uh, one of them. I hope uh, it will run, let's see. Yeah, probably it works. So this is showing the, the fields basically for uh, for this. Yeah, so uh, th th these are basically showing the bonding, anti-bonding. I say, I mean, I don't know whether it is, uh, you know, just good or bad because I'm not confident on my network. Basically what you need to see is in that bonding mode, because we said this plus 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 mode, you see the fields, which are basically the magnetic field here in ampere per meter, all are uh, same directed over here, inside the dielectric resonator as well as inside the cavity. And as in this case, it is uh, plus uh, plus minus mode, or it can be other way around those. Here it is downward, but these two are upward. So this uh, exciting the proper mode is important. And we did a uh, huge detuning by putting one additional layer in between these uh, flanges in the open area of the slit cavity. We put a dielectric layer purposefully because our idea was to basically check whether we can efficiently transfer power even through some obstacle. It may be some glass window, it may be some concrete block or anything which will be a little bit different than just like a homogeneous dielectric, but as a first proof of experiment we just did. And we observed that up to uh, quite a, a thick layer of up to 12 millimeter, the effective transfer efficiency at the non-bonding mode is not degraded below 90%. So this is good. And this is a further experiment with respect to detuning of the cavity radius and cavity radius, because when you do such experiments, especially uh, as a proof of concept experiment, uh, you need to have a study about the, uh, you know, perturbation, detuning, uh, experimental tolerance, etc. So we observed that for a um, quite a high range uh -huh. of radius of, uh, uh, for the cavity as a dielectric resonator, it is good, okay? So this is uh, something which is oidigeria. So these are the modes in the detuned cavity. As you can see, these are uh, some uh, near tuned cavity. This is over tuned cavity. And this is uh, a cavity which is loaded with a dielectric layer of thickness five millimeter and 20 millimeter the fields are more or less unperturbed. So this was the, um, you know, experimental part, the last part of my talk, uh, whatever theory I mentioned. So you can see some of the experimental photograph over here. This is the uh, excitation mechanism I talked about. This is basically the 
you know the half of the split cavity there is another half so this combined it looks like this this is connected to the network analyzer the other half will also be connected to the network analyzer as you can see from here okay and these are the dielectric resonators which are placed here and there so these are the dr samples with foam support uh, these foams are needed because uh, otherwise uh, it is difficult to do the experiment uh, so these are epsilon are nearly equal to one so they are uh, they don't have any uh, rf presence but they are uh, present mechanically for giving support to these uh, dielectric resonators and we did this experiment uh, quite a few times and as i mentioned uh, to check the tunability or detuning capability uh, we put different dielectric layers hoops or even glasses inside this this is a glass block kept in between the cavity this is a wooden block kept in between the cavity so we did different kind of uh, you know experiments possible and this is the direct uh, screenshot from network analyzer as i as i mentioned that this is actually the yellowish one is actually the s1 the bluish one is actually the s1 one so at this particular frequency which is the uh, frequency of interest that is the non burning frequency the s1 is very close to 0 db which mentions a very good efficiency for our experiment later on we have calculated the efficiency and uh, as i mentioned there are a lot of uh, theories also involved uh, so those all those theories are available in our uh, you know our published article later on uh, it is still going on we have extended these concepts in an aqueous medium like if the instead of a air cavity if we have a a cavity filled with some liquid whether wpt is possible or not so we are on this work uh, so there are some uh, concepts parametric studies etc going on basically to send power through some tank water tank or some liquid it may be some well etc so with this i come to uh, the closer of my talk only thing i just want to tell you that even though oh, we uh, didn't talk about anything which is having uh, real um, applications but this uh, wpt is having a lot of uh, upcoming applications in drones unmanned vehicles uh, even some solar panels for uh, you know nano satellites pico satellites etc so i just wanted to give you some idea that uh, this is the direction WPT research will go in next few years along with the electric vehicles. But electric vehicles, it need not be a wireless always. It may be a wired connection. But in some places, uh, these are very futuristic. I would say, and they are also thinking of uh, cableless uh, charging for electric vehicles. It will be just standing on the uh, on the power socket or on some uh, some kind of area where you have the we call it charging station it will be just standing for some time and it will be charged without i mean uh, much hazards with just cables etc so this is uh, some uh, thought food probably for future thoughts for all of us and uh, some more details uh, related to the technical part of the uh, talk uh, which was based on our work is available over here uh, my canadian collaborators dr sami and Professor Yai Anthan, this article is the article which is talking about the DRA based uh, multimode split cavity resonator. And initial work we published in earliest power transfer conference in Montreal. So these are some of the references that I have used. So thanks to uh, my collaborator and uh, acknowledgement to all the funding agencies, etc. So you know, these are the students who have worked on. So with this, uh, I conclude my talk. Uh, you know, thank you very much once again for the opportunity. I'll be very happy to talk on, uh, you know, in future on any of the SAB unit in a more detailed fashion. And I'm open to have some interaction with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, I think Sujit, sir, uh, 
you can now take up some questions which are yeah. there in the chat box before um, we can pose it for the concluding session. Not sure, Shuji sir is there. Uh, okay. Dr. Gautam, you can take. Yeah, I'll take. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, so thank you, sir. It's very nice uh, talk and very informative. To uh, the participants are also posting lots of uh, appreciation. So we'll just take a few questions. We are already yeah. running a little bit. So is it possible to harvest energy from our body uh, as per as we are getting exposed to EM radiation continuously? Ananya is asking, Dr. Ananya. Yeah, I think it's a very thoughtful question. Uh, uh, yeah, we actually radiate some, our body is also radiating some signals, but probably this is very uh, low power signals, uh, but much more power is available from the ambient sources uh, in terms of uh, cellular tower regulation and other kind of uh, radiations. So probably those are, those are better sources, but if you ask this question uh, to any theoretical physicist, they will definitely say yes, because according to physics, any object which is not at zero Kelvin has some power radiation. That is in terms yeah, of- Yeah, so radiation. I'll just uh, uh, thinking over here. I have met one uh, professor from Alto University. Uh, I think his name is Chris Shankaran, if I am remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. So he uh, is working currently, was working, working that time, something two, three years back uh, mm -hmm. on mod modeling this, uh, uh, this, um, the, uh, the, this, uh, the tapping this 40 terahertz kind of a radiation, which is in the picowatts level. Yeah. Uh, so he was trying to make uh, 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 this, uh, nano kind of uh, devices which can tap in that energy uh, so but it was a challenging task that yeah, yeah definitely it is so it, it is it, theoretically it, it, doable definitely yeah. and uh, but but the point is uh, as engineering application we have to see what are the places where that low power uh, yeah he, he may be a very small uh, maybe you can wear a shirt which can generate a power which can uh, in turn <laughs> Yeah, some, yeah. some gadgets with you which you are carrying right right you are correct yeah <laughs> thanks for okay. uh, mentioning yeah. that yeah yeah so uh, next uh, ram is asking how can we apply rf harvesting uh, wpt in capsule antenna uh, especially uh, when uh, the power received at the inside antenna is less and the uh, then uh, and then again again uh, antenna is less than uh, the, the another uh, transmitter antenna to transmit the images would be more prone to path loss due to uh, tissues and muscles. How much we cope up with? This? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a good question. It's a very good question. I think uh, the you know person uh, who is, has asked this question, Ram or whoever, uh, has good exposure on this particular area. The capsule antenna, not, or in general, the capsule endoscopy, I would say, in a more uh, you know complete system, is is challenging. And here, uh, it is basically the full system. So when you talk about the entire thing, the channel modeling, the loss due to the body effect, even uh, the body shadowing, and all the effects in, for all postures, it has to be. Uh, considered and we already know that uh, you know the final uh, loss is immense so considering that full channel modeling has to be done there are some good articles already available and uh, for uh, doing the work the good part is for such complicated uh, model also some effective uh, you know torso model or the equivalent phantom model, et cetera, are available. So if you can design an antenna and along with the rectifying circuit, et cetera, if you can design your rectenna system, uh, which will be used in, as your uh, capsule endoscopy antenna, et cetera, you can do the uh, full, uh, you know, full system level or can simulation. And some of the people have already done experiment on that particular thing also. So that way also, 
probably uh, full work uh, can be done. I think uh, one of my uh, BTEC students just uh, pre-pandemic uh, did a good design uh, on that and we presented that work in probably not published in any journal till now. We presented this work in APSI in 2020 probably. And there are some good, uh, quite a few good articles in that particular area. Here, uh, more than uh, WPT work, the more challenge uh, remains into the full system where a lot of losses are involved. As rightly mentioned in your question itself, that is the channel modeling that is very, very important. Yes. So that, that's yeah. what I so wanted. To last say. question. So uh, how do we place the, uh, the DRA on the substrate? Any ad adhesive material can be used. Uh, will they affect the antenna characteristic? Yeah, yeah, very good question. In our experiment, we did not use any adhesives. So what we did was we made a foam substrate, uh, which is epsilon close to one. If I remember correctly, it was 1.03. So in the side the foam, so which is pretty soft, inside the foam we created a uh, groove, and inside the groove we placed that DRA. We did not use any adhesive. But if for any real application you need an adhesive, you have to use an index match adhesive. Index match adhesive means it has to have the same epsilon as that of your uh, dielectric resonator so that you won't create any additional uh, you know, tolerance uh, from the adhesive side uh, to your overall experiment. But as in our experiment, we did not use an adhesive. We, uh, we just made the group of proper size so that the DR pieces just fit inside that. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very yeah, much. there is one guy uh, who is uh, requesting for asking question, but we are highly over yeah. uh, stretched over time. So yeah, half an hour. Uh, yeah. So th uh, sorry for that. Uh, so I'll ask now Professor Sivasankar to conclude the session and yeah. thank you. And before that, I, I would like to thanks to Chinmay sir uh, to joining the session, even uh, for accepting our request, even though he is out of the station, despite of those many restrictions, he, he yeah. has joined the program. So thank you so much, sir. No problem. Uh, yeah, thank you. It was a little bit tough. I was uh, unsure initially. So we have seen a lot of noises around uh, my yeah, but it's quite, quite, quite smooth. Uh, yeah. Okay, then clear, thanks yeah. to my network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. so uh, you, sir, uh, you can conclude the session. Uh, thank you, Dr. Divya. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Dr. Um, I was uh, listening to all the sessions and it gives me immense pleasure. Uh, to see that FDP on recent trends in microwave and beyond techniques has been successfully concluded today. Uh, indeed, all the sessions were very informative and very interactive. I could see from the kind of questions which are coming and even after the session, the kind of interaction which was happening between the speakers and the participants, uh, uh, we can see it was a very successful FDP. So various advancements of RF and microwave technologies, such as wireless power transfer, suspended substrate transmission lines, microwave amplifiers or absorb absorber, MIMO antennas, beam forming techniques, and metamaterials have been discussed at length over the last six days during various sessions. So another important uh, aspect of this FDP, all these concepts were discussed both theoretically and practically. And all these were demonstrated by eminent professors from premier institutes, both in India and abroad, as well as industry experts in the RF and microwave domain. The program has been planned to introduce new techniques and to enhance the teaching and research capabilities for building researchers in the domain of RF and uh, microwave and uh, looking at the participation of all the participants I think we have succeeded in uh, in our um, objective we are certain this program has created a positive impact on the majority of the participants 
the in-depth discussion followed by each lecture surely made the concepts more clear for the participants in their domain of research. We are happy to inform that most, most of the participants have appreciated the faculty development program in terms of content presentation and interaction with the speakers. The program has progressed very smoothly with uh, the, uh, the support of all the participants and the speakers for the past six days. I would like to thank all the speakers on behalf of the organizing committee for their participation, even with all their busy schedules, especially taking time and answering all the queries is what made this FDP a real success. I would also like to thank all the participants for their active involvement and unparalleled enthusiasm while attending such a six day long program that took on a virtual platform. I would also like to thank all the speakers and participants that as discussed in the very first session, we will soon have a full-fledged advanced center for EM-based activities. We would like to welcome all for the collaborations. Finally, I would like to thank SRM AP management for all the support and coordinators, Dr. Ramesh, uh, Dr. Divya, and Dr. Gautam for organizing the program and other faculty members of the department for volunteering in coordinating the sessions. I would like to thank all the participants for attending the FDP in a full-fledged manner. Again, thank you very much. Uh, and it's my pleasure to give the concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Siva sir. Uh, I hope Siva sir was taking viva, even though <laughs> he came here and he. Yeah, he's quite busy. He is director yeah, of admission here. Uh, it was <laughs> quite appreciable, sir. Thanks for your support all the time. So, <laughs> Siva sir is our ex <laughs> so, Thank you. We had a great time with him as a chodi. So. Yeah, so we'd like to uh, conclude before just with few announcements, uh, like uh, whatever PPTs we'll get from the speakers, we'll yeah, definitely so clear with Dr. you. Yeah, so Dr. Gautam, uh, like uh, student, uh, the participants are more uh, uh, concerned about today's PPT of uh, call, mm -hmm. sir. So I have received uh, those slides. Mm -hmm. I will share to all the participants through the uh, mail which is provided to you. Yeah, as and uh, as uh, requested by uh, call, sir, you please do not share it further. Yeah. Keep it with you for your own work, uh, and also will uh, the live links are also available. Uh, the recorded links are also available in YouTube, so you can um, anytime access that from the YouTube. Uh, they will be all available, and also uh, our uh, email IDs and all, uh, all the speakers' email IDs you already are in. Uh, communicated with so you can uh, communicate for any uh, future uh, communication and also uh, one more thing uh, uh, we'll be sharing a, a, a link for uh, the, the certificates in uh, shortly through your mail so you'll receive that uh, you, you please submit the form and you'll uh, a, a virtual uh, a soft copy of the certificate will be generated uh, yeah, so one more right. announcement. So today the link has been shared of the feedback form. Please uh, fill that. Okay, that is mandatory for all the program in order to generate the certificate. So, and also, uh, yeah, before concluding the session, I just want to take uh, the feedback from uh, at least one or two participants uh, what what their act actual feelings yeah. about the no, program. Yeah, please raise so, your hand. We'll unmute you. Yeah. Anyone who wants to speak. Okay, Jhansi Rani, I'm allowing you to yeah. talk. You just unmute. You just unmute and speak. Yeah, yeah, one second. Yeah, I've already given the permission. Oh, you're given, okay. Yeah, please unmute. Jhansi uh, Rani. Jhansi, yeah. I think she's from yeah. <laughs> Triple IT, Trichy. Uh, hello, uh, Jhansi ma'am, can you? I think it's not audible. Okay, then I'll, we can I'll allow, allow that. Mm. Yeah. 
yeah please go ahead tell myself doctor okay Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello? Can I? Can I? Yeah, can I? Yes, yes, please, please. Continue, sir. Yeah. Yeah, myself, Dr. Srikant, Associate Professor from SRM, IST Modi Nagar. Martin, from... the Martin, the Nancy Marie was from them. Please, yes. ma'am. And uh, it is really being as a RF and microwave guy. Uh, it is really wonderful, excellent presentation, ma'am. Means especially all all the means persons those who have given they are the well known highly um, appreciated means it is it is a, a at least being as a uh, as a faculty I am totally thrilled towards the research type and I will give all this feedback to my own uh, PhD scholars only thank you thank you so much. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, Dasi, ma'am, if you can. Uh... Hello. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes good afternoon to everyone. I am Professor Jansi from Siddhartha Engineering College. Oh, so uh, you know, uh, what are the sessions? All the sessions I enjoyed uh, right from the beginning, from the inauguration. That is, even though it is uh, late night, we enjoyed his uh, session, and all the sessions are. Recent topics. All these sessions are interesting and uh, recent topics. My uh, PhD area is also in the microwave, uh, microwaves only in the wave guard slot uh, analysis and couple junctions. I am also working in the area of uh, antennas and all the topics you have clubbed. That is microwaves and uh, 5G communication. All these things. It is the new uh, era for the researchers who, which are working in the RF and microwaves, which are working in the RF and microwaves. I have uh, attended all the programs right um, from two to five o'clock all the days. Each and every one is uh, very very interesting and and no repetition is there. Especially I can say there is no repetition and I can say that now in this uh, area so many people are working and uh, it is interesting. Our uh, energy harvesting also it is a new topic and we are able to understand all the analysis you have done uh, uh, presented by the others. Thank you very much. Thank you for the SRM AP uh, coordinators for organizing this event. Uh, I can say that now only people are uh, going for the IoT and computer science, but in our uh, antennas area and harvesting and microwaves also, so much research people are interesting because I have seen the number of participants. Uh, so many people are working in this area and they are posing the questions. Okay, I thank you for the participants. They are very uh, attentive that is from the beginning two o'clock to five they are <coughs> starting the sessions okay uh, thank you very much uh, thank, thank you whenever we are organizing any comment please send us the link uh, we'll attend thank you thank you yeah, yeah. thank you thank you ma'am yeah without your participation we we couldn't able to do anything so participate uh, miss participants uh, participation is the must here okay, okay. without that we could not able to execute anything okay. Very nice. So, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, sir. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, one more we can take. Uh, okay, Chaitanya. so. Yeah, the last. Yeah, yeah, good afternoon. Yeah. yeah. It's actually, uh, it's a, the well planned, it is a workshop is well planned. The contents are actually very good, actually. Uh, only kind of for my side, actually, some small suggestion to you is. So, can yes. you arrange like this workshop at we uh, weekend so that? We may not waste through due to some classwork or something. Okay, okay. We'll small, try small that uh, yeah. next time. But uh, it's uh, we are to uh, yeah, it's very it. tough. Since the long uh, session, yeah, yeah. <laughs> six days. So because we will not get like sessions. This is a problem. Ah, no, it's, yeah, uh, true. Only problem but, is uh, that there are guidelines from UGC and AICT that IMDP should be that long. <laughs> So that's yeah. why we had to keep it uh, five days. We can Otherwise, see in the YouTube the videos, yeah, yeah. but only thing yeah, is yes. when we want to ask the questions, no? yeah, we, interaction. We know, yeah, yeah, we know, we know. Uh -huh, that definitely. is a problem actually. Uh, the, we can see the same videos in YouTube. That is not an issue. But yeah. only thing is we want to have uh, some director because especially when you are bringing so yeah, much. Yeah, that's why we to... tried to keep a uh, trade off. So that's why we kept to two to five. Yeah. So at least more most of the time people are actually having labs and all. Uh, two to five 
the classes are hard and because we will not get that like a resource persons every time that is that yeah yeah we yeah, missed yeah. it actually. so that that's why thing. that's why we have kept as a backup uh, on youtube Thanks. so anytime you can watch yeah that's yeah, and uh, about questions you can... Uh, you can forward to us uh, or directly write to them uh, we can definitely take this up okay yeah, yeah. Good. that is only can because we need actually yeah. more of the important information from this those who are actually lively doing this actually because most yeah, of the people one from the nasa big people i uh, chose people like that so that who are interactive they allow yeah and we have like uh, almost all the queries we have conveyed to the speaker so <laughs> all the participant <laughs> should agree with that so due to some time constraint like today it is going like a 41 minutes uh, it means more so that's why we couldn't able to take all the queries but whatever the possible from our side we have done yeah yeah thank you uh, so thank you uh... so thank you so much all the participants especially because uh, if we are the base then we are the building blocks and without you we cannot make the building so thank you so much for the this success of this uh, faculty development program of 6 days i know it's a long time uh, yeah. to sit to to 5 pm <laughs> for these many days uh, so thanks a lot everyone and if you have any suggestion you can post your suggestion we will take uh, and we will try to implement in near future okay yeah, th so thank you very much i mean i think i did not attend any session apart from my session and yeah, i can understand, can understand that, that. <laughs> it was very well organized and i see very nice background for all of you <laughs> dr gautam divya and others so this is definitely a success thank you so much yeah thank you sir thank you thank you sir yeah. thank you sir for being being here all a right. long time yeah. all the best yeah okay so uh, yeah. any more doubt or any other suggestion from the participant side sir saha sir is there i can ask sir no he sir, has just, just not left, left. <laughs> yeah if you have any queries please post to us we'll forward uh, definitely yeah. forward to him so yeah if you have any other suggestion to keep the uh, seminar or workshop you can suggest yeah, we will definitely you try direct to get direct questions regarding your research then definitely you can directly write to him also they are all very approachable persons at uh, most of them yeah, we know sir was in ipp uh, kerala koji kod actually yeah yeah so yeah it's the times we, are also limited we used to get every actually so by koji kods regularly ipp activities yeah 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 so i request all the participant please fill the today's uh, the feedback form which is shared it is mandatory <laughs> no that that form we are going to share through the ah, mail we are going to share we have not yet shared yeah these are this is the normal regular session of session feedbacks and session uh, um, yeah that is overall assessment. feedback of all yeah, overall sessions. feedback we'll say we'll share uh, through mail so that um, those who have not joined this also but joining other sessions should not miss okay so thank you all uh, again uh, so we'll just conclude over here thanks for being with us for the last 6 days uh, and uh, we had a very cooperative uh, audience mm -hmm. yeah thanks so yeah. we'll stop over here yes yeah youtube link someone was asking uh, it's i think easily available so yeah the... it's easily available anyway for backup uh, we will share yeah, with we'll share. on the same uh, mail yeah. okay okay so we'll share all the links yeah so thank you thank you so much thank you